Hello, it is Tuesday, February 13th, 2024. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. It's a Tuesday crossword, which means we should be solving another relatively gentle early week themed crossword. And this hopefully relatively gentle early week themed edition of the Daily Solve has been brought to us by Alex, Laura Sexton, Victoria Rajishka, and as always, the indomitable Shulmaster. So thank you so much to the four of them. Of course, they're benefactors of the Daily Salt Patreon campaign. That means that they keep this channel going with their direct contributions. And for that, I'm incredibly grateful. Thanks to those four, but also thank you to everybody who's a patron of the channel on Patreon. If you'd like to become such a person, you can head over to patreon.com slash daily solve, where you'll find all of the bonus videos available to patrons. There's a link in the description field as well. And uh, benefactors also get the daily solve. Let's check the crosses official mug. So thanks so much to those four. Thanks to everybody who's a patron. It really does keep this whole thing going day in, day out. Thank you to all of them. And thanks as well. If you've checked out the daily solve official discord chat server, there's a link in the description field to that nice, friendly chat community. And finally, thanks yet again. If you subscribe to the channel on YouTube, if you like the videos from time to time, if you comment when you feel so moved, those things are all helpful. They help YouTube understand that people enjoy this, this channel. So thanks if you do any of those things. And, um, Having said all of that, let's get on to today's crossword. This is a construction, a Tuesday-themed construction by Peter Gordon, a, an extremely experienced constructor with well over 100 crosswords to his name for the New York Times. It was edited, as always, by Will Shorts. And let's start solving and see how we do. Oh, look at this. Um, we had one of these a few days ago, but this is another grid with um, symmetry about a vertical axis. In other words, if we folded the grid in half along uh, this vertical bisection, we would see an identical uh, pattern of black squares. And what do we think this looks like? Some sort of a, a mountain or pyramid or something pointing to this crossed figure here? I don't know. I don't know if I can infer what I think this is meant to look like. It seems as though it's illustrating something. I suppose you could see a kind of two eyes and nose and a mouth as humans who are definitely predisposed to see that pattern in things. Um, but I'm not sure. Anyway, delivery at an hôpital. Uh, this could be a, a, um, a baby, a delivery in the sense of a baby being delivered, being born. And an hôpital in, in French would be a hospital. So that would mean the answer would also need to be in French. Generally speaking, if you have a significant uh, percentage of the clue in a foreign language, the answer will be as well. So I think that's what we're looking for there. But well, let's check it with the downs. Heftiness could be bulk, big, you know, uh, solidity or, or heaviness. Class that covers price ceilings and price floors in brief. Econ, e economics might cover such things, dealing with supply and demand, that kind of thing. Indication that a gas stove is functioning properly. And then we have NHL in brackets. Okay, so the brackets as well as the asterisk suggest that this is a theme clue and answer uh, will be related to the puzzle's overall theme. I do not know what's going on with NHL. Maybe it's an NHL, the name of a National Hockey League team that serves as a punny answer to indication that a gas stove is functioning properly. Pilot light, what would be the, well, what is the indication that a gas stove is functioning properly? I'm not sure. What about this? School near, near Bel Air. Well, Bel Air is in Los Angeles. So my guess here is the University of California at Los Angeles. Uh, but I do not have a guess about this gas stove clue. An uncouth sort could be a lout, maybe a sort of boorish person, someone who's um, maybe sort of loud or rude. What about this? Diner or bistro, an eatery, so a, a, a restaurant of some kind, an eat dining establishment, maybe a relatively informal one. Piece of volleyball gear, knee pad. You may wear those while playing volleyball. That would seem reasonable. So what is the, oh, blue light? Indication that a gas stove is functioning properly or blue flame. A gas stove does produce blue flame. So maybe that's what this is. NHL. I have no idea what this has to do with the NHL. Is there a team called the blue flame? Or maybe there's a team nickname. Maybe there's a team whose official name is something else, but fans refer to them as the blue flame. I really haven't, I haven't a clue. I'm sort of just taking stabs at the, in the dark here. Let's let's look at the crosses. Ukulele Ridge, a fret. So 
A ukulele is a stringed instrument, of course, and um, like a guitar, it's fretted. So there are little ridges running along the neck that are frets that, uh, against which, which you press the strings to create a particular frequency and note. All right, Coke competitor, Pepsi. Those are both um, colas, both soft drinks, soft drink brands, obviously. Harry Belafonte album, whose first song is Deo. Um, well, I mean, he, Harry Belafonte was certainly known for Calypso music, so he must have had an album that was indeed entitled Calypso. That would make perfect sense, and it seems to be the answer. All right, 27 for three, the cube. So... Uh, three cubed is 27, three times three times three, three to the third power. So 27 is the cube of three. Most populous member of NATO in brief. The, the USA is the most populous member of the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. Okay, rush job letters ASAP. So if you rush something, you want it done as soon as possible. So those would be the, the associate let, associate, associated letters with that order. And then here we have a friend of Thumper and Flower. Those are characters from uh, Bambi, the um, animated film, and possibly the book from which it drives. I've never actually read the book Bambi, so I don't know if these if these character names are drawn from that. But in any case, it's certainly at least true of the film. Okay, all rise, undoer. Be seated, right? Okay, this is the kind of thing that I, like many people, probably mainly know from court courts as depicted on in television and film, but you know, the bailiff or whoever will say all rise. And then when the judge enters and then be seated. All right. Sword with a three sided blade, an epee, um, used in fencing and, and, and I guess the sport epee. Anyway, father blank 2022 Mark Wahlberg film. I I've, I've not seen this, but I, I sort of vaguely remember it coming out father I don't know that I would have remembered this without the S there to clue me in, but I think Father Stu, let's look at the down and see if that is correct. Road surface, tar, yes, tar covering a road. It's fairly straightforward. And then I think this is going to be right, Stu. Branded lollipops. Um, Dum-dums, I think. Those incredibly tiny, uh, very tiny orbed <laughs> lollipops, I think are dum-dums like this. I believe that's correct. Um, once again, we'll, we'll check the crosses and see. Streaming channels sometimes shown at grooming salons and veterinarians' offices. I've never heard of this, but I'm going to guess because I feel there must be a streaming channel for essentially any topic in which people have interest. Um, I'm guessing there's something called dog TV, and that is what you would see at a veterinarian's office or a grooming salon, presumably meaning pet grooming. Um, I have to assume this is, this is a thing. <laughs> uh, it seems as though it would be. So let's, but once again, let's check the crosses and see if we can confirm it. I'm blank your tricks. I'm on to your tricks. I, I know what you're up to. And then here we have a beer dispenser. Is it, you could dispense beer from a keg, straightforwardly enough. Uh, Louis XIV's nickname Oh, here we have NBA. Right. So this is a different sports league. Well, anyway, Louis the Fourteenth was the Sun King, so we can put that in. I don't again, I don't know why it's the NBA. Oh. Is it oh I see. Is it maybe this is a singular two singular uh references to players from two different teams? So are there NBA teams called the Suns and the Kings? perhaps. So an individual player from them might be a son or a king. And then similarly, are there NHL teams named the Blues and the Flames or maybe the Flame? I'm, I'm thinking that some, essentially some version of what I'm saying is the case. That's, that's my current thinking. Um, uh, okay. That seems plausible to me. We, we, we're using two, in each of these cases, we're using two different teams from the league specified to construct a, a straightforward answer to the clue. Okay. As opposed to, a, the, the, and it doesn't seem to be a punny answer. These seem like very straightforward answers, in fact. So there we go. I think that's the case. Windshield feature tint. Oh, yeah, I suppose you could have a, can you have a tinted windshield? You can certainly have tinted windows. Is it, are you allowed to have tinted windshields? 
I don't, I don't know. In any case, I think that is probably the answer regardless. Mixed drinks. Um, not sure about that. It probably ends with an S, but let's, let's see if that helps. Part of an oboe. Uh, stem, is that? I mean, if, if it weren't for thinking it would end in an S, my first thought would have been reed. Um, mix. Oh, it is that. It is that. Sorry. Okay. When I read mixed drinks, I thought it meant, well, I don't know what I thought. I guess because it doesn't say mixed drinks. I thought it meant maybe drinks made from a mix or something, you know, a powdered mix or something like that. Uh, but no, it doesn't mean that. It means mixed drinks as in prepared drinks. So you tend bar. Uh, you, you, you yourself do the mixing of drinks. You tend bar. That is the answer. So then what about this? Best picture winner that becomes an earlier best picture nominee when F is added to the front. Here we go. This is Argo, which if you add an F to the front becomes Fargo, which is one of my fav absolute favorite films by the Coen brothers, which is saying something because they uh, have a lot of those. Um, but yeah, Fargo is just an absolutely incredible film. Anyway, before of your is air. In other words, Poet, a poetic form. Well, I suppose poetic, or in this case, it's saying of your in the sense of being a sort of quaint or old fashioned way to say before. And I think it qualifies as either that or the, or a poetic usage. All right. No longer a minor. If one is no longer a minor, one is of age of the you know, age of majority. And then legitimate object of attack is a fair, not a fair target, but fair game. Maybe you could say that's a, you know, that that person or concept or thing is a legitimate object of attack, they're fair game. Okay. Slugger who ended his career four shy of the 700 home run club. Uh, well, I certainly wouldn't have known this fact, but I don't think we need to because I can recognize the nickname A-Rod, Alex Rodriguez, who I certainly recognize as a famous baseball player thanks to his, his not infrequent presence in the New York Times crossword. Grizz oh, here's another one of these. Grizzly for one, NFL, so something bear. Brown bear? The Browns sounds like the name. It sounds like, I think there is a team called the Browns. And then the Bears, I'm sure there's a Bears. Uh, I think that's right. Oh, sorry if you're getting some rumbling noises through the mic. Some sounds like some drilling just started next door. I apologize for that. Okay, fundamentals. The fundamentals are often the ABCs, either literally or figuratively. You could literally learn the ABCs would be very fundamental, or you could learn the ABCs of some subject. Okay, a medical breakthrough, a cure could be a breakthrough of in, in a particular medical field. And then visionary could be a seer, maybe. Um, I mean, obviously, literally someone who has vision, I guess, would be a seer, but also if you are someone who is able to kind of see farther than your contemporaries. You might be a visionary or a seer in a figurative terms. T on a test is true, isn't a true false test. Margaret Blank, author of The Handmaid's Tale is Margaret Atwood, uh, author of The Handmaid's Tale and um, Oryx and Crake and the and all sorts of other novels. Okay. Captain Von Trapp in The Sound of Music, e.g. Um, I, I, I think I have seen Sound of Music, but it not probably not since I was a child. I don't really remember. I don't, I don't actually know what this is referring to, unfortunately. Maybe it will seem incredibly obvious in retrospect, but I, but I can't think off the top of my head. Uh, National Park in Southwest Utah. There's a, there's a Zion National Park in Utah. So I think that's probably the answer. And a wild canine of Australia, Dingo, fam famous, famously, um, in a fa famous denizen of Australia. Oh, a widow, a widower. Okay, right. That that does sound sort of vaguely familiar to me. Um, the, so I, I'm sure that's right. Okay. Redditor, e.g. a netizen, a sort of citizen of the internet. Um, I think that's probably the answer there. It's a phrase that you don't, you don't hear as much anymore because <laughs> most of us are effectively this thing at this point in some form or fashion. So it doesn't, uh, not necessarily with respect to Reddit in particular, but just in general terms. Okay, fish eggs are not roe, not caviar. I don't know. 
Why do I not see what this is? Hmm, not sure. We'll keep going. Binary pronoun with a slash. Um, with a slash. All I can think of that would go in here would be he, she. Um, that would fit with an E at the end in five letters. Let's see if that works with the crosses. Therapy whose name is Japanese for finger pressure. Oh, shiatsu? That's funny. That's one of those phrases. I've sort of just known the phrase shiatsu for as long as I can remember and didn't specifically actually know its meaning. Finger pressure. I never actually knew that. I feel as though when I was growing up, this is just sort of one of those words that was just kind of a buzzword to sell fancy um, massage chairs and things and like air airline sky mall catalogs and things like that. Uh, but there we go. I think this is probably the answer. Okay, to remain undecided is to pend, to be in a in a sort of un, unanswered or undecided state. Uh, a donkey is an ass. There we go, straightforwardly enough. That was too close for comfort. You might say, phew, and be relieved about something. So what is this one? I don't think we read this clue. Map detail is inset, and I don't think we read... Oh, this doesn't look right. Fish egg. Oh, spawn. Oh, fish spawn. Right, of course. And that reveals that I... I had the wrong thought in here for that was too close for comfort. I mean, I think few would have been a, a reasonable answer, but it's not correct in this case because we need to cross with spawn, which is a W. Um, so it's a, so that's the answer, straightforward. All right, kimono sash is an OB. Um, this is, I mean, I don't know if it comes up quite, oh, sorry, if it's quite often enough to um, be to reach official word status in the New York Times crossword. But if I did have to um, have to designate an official garment fastener, or official, what would you call this? An official kind of garment component of the New York Times crossword, it would certainly be the obi, which is uh, a sash for a, a Japanese kimono. And long journeys are voyages. Uh, London's Big Ben is the bell inside the clock tower at the Houses of Parliament. And one's unconcerned with individual achievements or what both words, oh, team players, or what both words and the answers to the starred clues are examples of, yeah, team players. There we go. So it was the it was the thing I thought, which is that these are sort of singular versions of uh, various team names. So we're referring to individual players from those teams, a brown, a bear, etc. And so these are players from those teams. Okay, great. So there we go. That is how the theme works. We'll finish off the puzzle now. Uh, engine supercharger, a turbo. You could have a turbocharger in a uh, in an internal combustion engine in a car. And Clarence in It's a Wonderful Life, e.g. And this is MLB. So right, this is Clarence was an angel in the film It's a Wonderful Life, or he was the the angel, the you know the central angel character in that film. So angel, oh, guardian, guardian angel, I guess. Okay, so there must be a, team, a baseball team called the Guardians, which I don't think I've heard of, but I have heard at least of the Angels because they're from California. Okay, uh, Spices Up is... I actually can't think what this is off the top of my head. What about this one? Sticky Substance is goo or goop, maybe? And Apple product, oh, I have something wrong. Oh, I, I mistyped be seated. Okay, Apple product, yeah, because I read Apple product from 2001 to 2022 and immediately thought, well, that's an iPod, but I mistyped be seated as be seater. Sorry about that. If I had another typo list streak, which I doubt I did, I think I probably made at least one typo yesterday. I've broken it again. Uh, a military post could be a fort, a military fort to posting. And then scary 13th to some would be Friday. So Friday the 13th is associated with bad luck for whatever reason. And then garment for the Grim Reaper would be a robe, as, as the Grim Reaper is often depicted wearing. A strip of gear as a ship. Strip of gear. Oh, to, oh I see it's a verb. To strip of gear as a ship would be to unrig it. So, you, you know, you remove the sort of sails and everything and you'd, you'd unrig the ship. All right, champagne grape uh, Pinot. I don't actually think I knew that, but I do recognize Pinot as the name of a wine grape, so I suppose it seems to be used in champagne. Bird with a lot of stuffing, question mark. So pun of some sort. Bird with a lot of stuffing. 
Which is the which is the bit that we think is the pun here? I'm not sure. What about this one? Blank code. Well, Morse code is a it's one of the more famous codes, I'd say. Oh, Larry Larry Bird, the the basketball player with a lot of stuffing. What does that mean? All I can think of is is Larry Bird here. I don't know what else this would be, but I don't understand the pun. I'm sure, I'm sure this is right. I don't really. I'm not doubting the answer at all. I just don't understand why it's the answer. With a lot of stuffing. That, that must be some sort of, well, I was going to say it must be some sort of baseball term, you know, baseball slang, to, sorry, I keep saying baseball, basketball slang term that I don't know. But I think it's just as likely that it's something incredibly obvious that I'm simply missing. I don't know. Anyway, eye afflictions are styes. You could have a sty in your, in, your, in your eye or eyelid and that would be painful. And then pastis flavoring is uh, anise. So um, it's a strong anise kind of licorice flavor that you'd encounter in um, absinthe or pernod or something like that. Uh, uh, pernod being a, a pastis that's a type of, uh, of liqueur. And then spices up. All right, I saw this before and I didn't have an answer and I still don't probably ends in an S. Monday Night Countdown Cable Channel. Okay, well, this is um, an appropriately sports-themed clue, even though it's not technically part of the puzzle's theme, but I assume this will be ESPN, the uh, U.S. Sports Network, Television Network. And then Prince, but not a princess. Man? I don't, I don't know. That seems very, sort of very broad, but maybe that's the answer. Plot line. Acre? No. I was thinking of a plot of land, but I don't, an acre isn't really a line. Okay, well, hmm. Like a wet noodle. Okay, a wet noodle is limp. That's, that's straightforward, at least. So, oh, an axis. Oh, as in if you're plotting a graph, an axis would be, you know, one of the lines on a Cartesian plane or something like that. So, okay. So then spice, oh, sex is up, right. Okay, so that is a weight. So I was really focused on spices in the sense of food, but it, generally speaking, if you sensationalize something, you know, you could be said to sort of sex it up. So there we go, I think that's the, that's the answer. And then an office note could be a memo, a memorandum. And then finally, ah, prince but not a princess is a son. Okay, that is a bit more specific. Uh, and that uh, that's a, a, a more sort of, seems like a more appropriate answer. So there we go. <laughs> That was the Tuesday crossword. I mean, I would say, broadly speaking, that was a pretty approachable puzzle, but there were definitely moments where I, you know, th there were more moments of resistance than I might expect on a Tuesday necessarily. So this is a puzzle where I'd be very curious to hear from others about their experience with it. And it was also interesting solving this, all of these um, sports team name related clues, because, you know, I, I was only very very sporadically aware. I mean, I guess now that they're all in the grid, I'm sure I've heard of most of these. I can't really say I've heard necessarily of the blues or the flames necessarily. Um, and then you get things like the bears, which I, I'm sure, I mean, if you asked me, is there a team called the bears? I would say, well, yeah, of course there is, but I couldn't specifically tell you where, where they're from or anything like that. So I, it's sort of more of just an assumption almost than anything else. Uh, and the Guardians, I don't think I've heard of. So I don't know. I can't really tell if that is a sort of potentially challenging element of this puzzle. If, you know, if you're like me and you're just sort of out of touch with this sort of thing, or if you just don't have a U.S. cultural context, generally speaking, or North American, maybe more accurately in this case. Um, but you don't necessarily need to, because each of these clues has a, a completely ordinary um each of these answers has a, a completely ordinary clue that isn't punny or anything. Often with this kind of theme, the answer will be a pun. And so it's helpful to understand the theme. But in this case, you don't really need to. Um, these are all completely ordinary clues with completely ordinary answers. Uh, so there we go. We had our blue flame, our brown bear, our guardian angel. And was it just those three? It's not highlighted by this one. Oh, no, no, no. Sun King. Yeah. That one's, that one's good. I really like that one. That's nice and nice and compact. Uh, so there we go. I think we had four pairs of those, unless I missed another one. If so, apologies. Uh, but there we go. That was our Tuesday crossword with a, a, a nice theme. Oh, and oh, maybe guardian angel. Maybe this is a, an angel with wings or something. Is that what this is? 
maybe? Guardian angel. Maybe that's what the, uh, because I, I forgot to sort of investigate what I thought the clue was, um, what the theme was illustrating. It could be guardian angel. I mean, it's funny because Clarence in A Wonderful Life doesn't, you know, look like a stereotypical angel. He's just a sort of middle-aged guy. Um, so he, he isn't necessarily being illustrated in this, in this grid. Uh, but maybe the sort of stereotypical depiction of an angel is, um, I think that might be the case. And then maybe sort of, yeah, I, I think that might, that might be, that might be what's going on here broadly. But of course, if you have another idea, let me know in the comments. I'm always curious. Uh, and, uh, there we have it. That was the Tuesday puzzle, the Tuesday video. I'll be back tomorrow with the Wednesday crossword midweek, mid difficulty puzzle. So do join me for that. But until then, please do have an excellent remainder of your Tuesday. Take care. Mm-hmm.